I'm Cece Torres with ID8 TV here at WonderCon 2024, and I am with Jose Arroyo, two-time Emmy-winning writer, illustrator, and cartoonist. Hello, Jose. Pleasure to meet you. Hi, and it's a pleasure to meet you as well. Thank you. How is the WonderCon going for you? It's going great. This is my first one, and uh, I'm here with my table mate, Tyler Dana, and we're just selling what we our creations here, which is what this is all about. We're in the small press area. WonderCon, first time. What do you think of it so far? So far, it's great. It's massive. Anybody who comes down here, you, you know, you'll get your money's worth because it's a huge con. Yeah. What made you? <laughs> that came out wrong. It's a huge con. No. <laughs> we just we'll, we'll we'll pass we'll bypass that. <laughs> yeah. We right we we know, we know we know what you meant. Okay, <laughs> we yeah, know yeah. what you meant. So, uh, what made you decide to come out here? Well, we, first of all, we, we were lucky enough to get a booth or a table, and um, but I've also wanted to showcase my creations um, separate from my 30-year career as a TV late-night TV comedy writer, which most of the time I spent with Conan O'Brien. Wonderful. I had a great time. But I also wanted to tell stories and create things and draw, and so I got into uh, cartooning for The New Yorker. And see, some of these panels are straight out of The New Yorker magazine, and, um, and then creating you know, comic books about Los Angeles, um, uh, comic books about my own neuroses, and uh, and comic books trashing cats, which is uh, we love that. I, oh no, I do. I love cat that. thoughts. Not all cats are awful, but this one was. And, uh, and was this a cat you personally had, or a cat you no, met? I mean, you know, I love cats actually, but I'm allergic to them, so I I can't get too close. Right? Same thing. There's no hatred against cats, but they are a little more aloof than dogs. They're not as demonstrative, and you can sort of uh, sometimes when they look at you, you're thinking they're not they're not being friendly. Yeah. So yeah, so, exactly. yeah, I can uh, yeah <laughs> exactly exactly. So I created all these things, and I'm and I'm out here sort of uh, promoting myself as a creator. And, um, and and forging a new direction for my career that's independent of the TV writing. Right. So how did you decide to make that pivot? Well, some of it was decided for me. Conan's uh, talk show ended in 2021, and you know it's fine. He's done. He's going to be fine. Uh, <laughs> so, um, and uh, I decided to start learning how to tell stories. I wrote a lot of scripts, and then I decided, well, instead of waiting for Hollywood to buy my script, why don't I just write? and draw and illustrate some story-based stuff. And that's my new direction. Awesome. How do you like it so far? Well, it's been difficult to make that. So it took me 10 years of writing comedy before I got my first TV comedy writing job. It took 10 years. I'm hoping that this one takes five years <laughs> to sort of ramp up, to get to be better known, to have my, uh, uh, you know, what have my voice heard and seen and, and uh, appreciated. So I'm in for the long haul. I, I have one life. I'm devoting it to expressing myself. And then that, that's kind of what brings me here. And it's what brings all, all the other people you're going to see here as well. Um, we're, we're surrounded by people who have uh, just a love of comics, a love of uh, expressing themselves, and who had a role perhaps in a, in a movie, or um, and, and they just want to sort of promote themselves, and, and that's what we're here for. Yeah, yeah, and you mentioned finding your voice. Tell us what your voice is. How would you describe it? My voice is kind of a mix. I, I like to make people laugh, but there's a strain of melancholy in me as well. Is this a therapy Yo. session? I'm not going to be charged for this, right? No, so, absolutely not. Okay, good. Uh, and but it, so it's a mix of sort of high, you know uh, humor and also a little bit of thinky and um, and so that's that's the direction I like I like to do. I don't like to do sort of broad belly laugh, uh, obvious stuff. I like humor with a little bit of a I don't know a little bit of a bitter a little or something you know like that sarcasm, uh it's a little sarcasm here. exactly this yes part. this one is a you know two parrots admiring a parrot who's saying oh he's not afraid to say exactly what other people are saying <laughs> very silly yeah, exactly. i like this one this one is uh, two people meeting on a date and the guy's saying what a coincidence i'm an aries who doesn't want to die alone too <laughs> so <laughs> some this connection is, this is a collaboration conan actually conan o'brien pitched this idea oh. And it's George Surratt, the, uh, the painter, looking at his uh, Sunday in the Park uh, painting. And his thought bubble is, this would make a great jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> because that's where we see that painting most. Right. So, And then, of course, this one is universal. This is a, this is a guy walking away to fill the uh, popcorn bucket again. He's saying, don't pause it. Just let me ask you questions for the next 20 minutes. <laughs> 
I love that one. It's very yeah. relatable. It's very relatable. Anybody who's ever watched something with someone else knows it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So tell me about this somewhere in LA. Somewhere Let's in talk LA about this. is a, basically a picture poem. This is, uh, you know, there's 24 pages. There's 24 hours in a day. So in each day, each hour, something is happening in LA that might as well be true. So uh, 3.29 in the morning, somewhere in LA, a waitress inches out of the bed of one of the stars of The Expendables. Uh, you know, it could happen. Um, somewhere in LA at five in the morning, a soccer dad teaches his son how to hate soccer <laughs> because he's tossing a ball at him. Um, somewhere in LA, uh, an improv troupe decides that Josh has got to go. They're voting him out because he's a show off. That was Conan's favorite panel. So some of them are funny. Some of them are sort of, you know, whatever, uh, truthful. Tongue in uh, cheek. Tongue in cheek. So that's my that's my wheelhouse for humor. <laughs> okay, so if people want to find your work, how can they get a hold of you? How can they find so you? Somewhere in LA is available on Amazon. So if you want to go there and find it, uh, you can find it there. And uh, 18 Awful Cat Thoughts and these uh, issues of Seething with Joy, you just have to come out and find me at a Comic-Con <laughs> near you. And what inspires you? What I know you mentioned you had TV writing, but before that even, what, what made you want to get into comedic writing? So the cartoonists that I admire are two of them. One is Charles Schultz, of course, Peanuts. But there was an Argentinian man named Kino who went by the a word named Kino, who did wordless cartoons that were so wonderful and so clever. Uh, he also created a series called Mafalda in Argentina. And so between those two, I just thought that is a, a, a wonderful thing to be able to do, to express your creativity silently or humorously with the simplest lines. Um, and I have, you know, miles to go before I get to that level. But it, but it's I'm happy to be. I don't know, in that continuum of artists, you know? Uh, so that's what inspires me, is to is to be able to tell stories with simple lines and black and white and and so on. Yeah. You're Emmy winning? Do you, uh, wanna, so do you want to brag about that? Well, I won an Emmy, with, plug. I won an Emmy with Conan O'Brien, and I won another Emmy with uh, Dennis Miller back uh, in 1999 or so, when I first started my TV writing career. I, it was my first year as a TV writer and we won the Emmy that year. So it was like being a rookie on the Lakers or something. It was great. <laughs> yeah. Anything else you want to add? Anything you want to tell people? I know that I had asked earlier another person, uh, we're kind of in the digital age now. Yes. So a lot of these hard copy things, a lot of these comics, we talked about the New Yorker. Yes. Some people don't even know it's still in print. Uh, talk about like how you want to keep the love of print or at least the word and pictures and art I'm totally, alive. I'm totally an analog person. The only thing I ever do is scan the finished uh, drawing on Bristol board. Um, I I someday maybe will will appro approach Photoshop or Procreate or some of those tools because I know they're tools. But I, I the whole thing for me is the joy of the process. Um, same thing with playing piano. I just like the tactile, the manual, the, the whatever, whatever that sort of touchy thing is. Um, I like that part of it. So um, India ink, brushes, pens, erasers, whiteout, all that stuff I, I thrill to. Uh, Hoping to yeah. keep it alive. Keeping so. it alive. There is actually a market for it now. Uh, people like the originals. They like to see the work that the artist actually made. Okay. Jose Arroyo. Yes. here with his work and we can pick up somewhere in LA online on Amazon anything else you want to add no thank you this is wonderful <laughs> thanks for having me talk with you yes, absolutely thank you so much we enjoyed it and best of luck here at WonderCon 2024 for IDA TV I'm Cece Torres